preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Lightly grease 10 silicone half circle molds. If you don't have any half circle molds, then lightly grease about 20 silicone cupcake molds. Then set that aside for a minute. In a large mixing bowl, sift together 56 grams or a half cup of coconut flour, 15 grams or around one tablespoon of baking powder, a fourth teaspoon of salt, 133 grams or around two-thirds cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice. I'm using Lakanto's classic monk fruit sweetener. You can use whatever granulated sweetener you want. Add 20 grams or around a fourth cup of cocoa powder. Sift the dry ingredients together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add four large room temperature eggs. Make sure they're room temperature so they stir in smoothly. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until all the dry ingredients are moist. Add a half cup of butter that's been softened, not melted, but you do want it soft enough to stir in smoothly. Add a half cup of room temperature keto milk of your choice. My favorite keto milk is always coconut milk. You can use whatever keto milk you want. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Stir everything all together until everything is fully combined in a thick batter forms. Divide the batter evenly among your prepared molds. If you're using the half circle molds like I am, it's roughly around a fourth cup of batter in each mold. If you're using cupcake molds, it's roughly around three tablespoons of batter in each cupcake mold. Spread the batter evenly throughout each one of your molds. Make sure that the top of the batter is smooth and as flat as you can get it. Place the filled molds into your preheated oven. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 minutes or until darkened around the edges and a tester comes out clean. Once the cakes are baked, remove them from your oven. They will be soft, but they will firm up as they cool. So allow the cakes to cool in the molds for about 20 to 30 minutes or until they are firm enough to remove without falling apart. After 20 to 30 minutes and the cakes are firm, Carefully remove them from the molds, then transfer them to a wire rack and allow them to cool completely before you fill them and frost them. Once the cakes are cooled to make the filling and frosting, place three cups of coconut flakes in a large food processor. If you want to, you can add two to three drops of gel food coloring. Pulse the coconut flakes around two to three times or just until the coconut flakes have been chopped into smaller pieces or if you're using color, Pulse them until the color is completely covering all of the coconut flakes. In a large mixer bowl, combine two and a half cups of keto marshmallow cream. I'll leave a link in the description to my marshmallow cream. It's super easy. Add a half cup of softened butter. Beat on medium speed for about one minute or until the marshmallow cream and butter are combined and creamy. Add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Turn your mixer on to low and gradually add one and a half cups of the powdered sweetener of your choice. I'm using a powdered monk fruit allulose blend that I make. Lakanta also just started making a monk fruit allulose blend if you want one that's already made. Make sure you just gradually add the powdered sweetener in small amounts and allow it to beat in after each addition. If you need to, you can stop the mixer from time to time and scrape down the sides of the bowl. You want to make sure that everything is getting completely combined and completely beaten together. Once all the sweetener is completely added, then increase your speed to medium and beat on medium for just about 30 seconds or so or just until everything is fully combined and completely smooth. Turn your mixer back onto low. Add one tablespoon of room temperature keto milk of your choice. Allow the milk to beat in until it's fully combined. If your mixture seems super thick, then you can add up to one more tablespoon of the keto milk of your choice. You're wanting this to be thick like a frosting. Increase the speed of your mixer to medium high, then beat on medium high for about one minute or until the frosting filling is fluffy. Line a clean work surface with parchment paper. Take your cooled cakes and turn them upside down so you have the flat side up on top. Use an apple corer or a sharp knife and carefully cut a chunk out of the center of each one of the cakes. Make sure when you're cutting this that you don't cut all the way through the cake. You want to cut about two thirds of the way through your cake. Fill a piping gun or piping bag halfway full with your frosting filling mixture. 
If you don't have a piping gun or piping bag, you can use just a small spoon. Pipe or spoon the frosting filling mixture into the holes that are in the center of each one of the cakes. And then once they're filled, just use a butter knife and smooth the extra frosting over the bottom of the cake so you have a flat bottom on the cakes. Once the cakes are filled, use a butter knife or a frosting spreader and spread a thin layer of frosting on the bottoms of each one of the cakes and then spread a generous or thick amount of frosting over the tops and the sides of the cakes. Take your pulsed coconut flakes and pour them into a wide bowl, then place your frosted coated cakes one at a time into the coconut flakes. Use your fingers or a spoon and coat the cakes completely with the coconut flakes. Use your fingers or the back of a spoon and gently press the coconut flakes into the frosting until the outside of the snowball is no longer sticky. Once the cakes are all coated, place them back onto a lined baking sheet, then place them in the refrigerator and refrigerate them for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the coating is fully set. After 15 to 20 minutes and the coating is set well, remove the snowballs from the refrigerator. You can eat these immediately. If you do have any leftovers, store them in an airtight container in your refrigerator for up to one week or in an airtight freezer safe container in your freezer for up to one month. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click the subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.